In 1991, Nintendo and Sony were preparing to present their first CD-ROM partnerships for the recently released Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The only problem was that while Sony, as according to a contract from 1988, was about to reveal their CD-ROM add-on, a Super Disk PlayStation prototype add-on for the SNES, Nintendo had secretly and unbeknownst to Sony got behind their back to partner with Sony's rival Philips. Sony was infuriated, but instead of publicly showing their outrage, they decided to return the favor by turning their PlayStation into Nintendo's everlasting nightmare. Nintendo History, Nintendo's Biggest Mistake, the Nintendo PlayStation In the early 1980s, when Nintendo was preparing their entry into the Japanese video game home console market with the Famicom, Sony was a global television and electronics giant with no interest in the video game industry. Even so, after Nintendo defied odds and ended the American video game crash of 1983 by launching their new Nintendo Entertainment System in the U.S. as a toy in 1985, one of Sony's engineers, Ken Kutaragi, was closely watching his daughter's interaction with the Famicom he had acquired for her. He soon became mesmerized by the system and realized the potential, which Sony was missing out on. As such, he was not hard to get on board when Nintendo eventually approached the Soundmaster with a request of developing a wavetable sound chip for their upcoming 16-bit system, the Super Famicom slash Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The result of Mr. Kutaragi's secret project for Nintendo was the Sony SPC-700, which at first infuriated most of Sony's executive board and where some even threatened to fire Kutaragi. It was then when the future CEO of Sony and then Sony president Norio Oga took matters into his own hands. He gave the necessary support and financial backing to complete the project. Nintendo was so pleased with the SPC 700 sound chip, which would eventually turn out to be one of Nintendo's greatest countermeasures against the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive, that they soon after went into negotiations with Sony for a partnership to develop a CD-ROM add-on for the SNES slash Famicom. The details came down to print in 1988 when Sony signed a contract with Nintendo to manufacture the CD-ROM add-on for the Famicom, the so-called Super Disk format. At the time, Nintendo underestimated the future popularity of the CD format and saw the Super Disk as a minor addition to their cartridge market. As such, in 1988, they agreed for Sony to develop the add-on system and retain control over most of the licensing. Sony and Ken Kutaragi set off to develop a system which eventually was named the PlayStation, as it was to play both traditional Nintendo licensed Famicom slash SNES cartridges and exclusive Super Disk CD-ROMs, which Sony would have licensing control over. Naturally, when Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamaguchi in 90 and 1991 realized their mistake of how important CDs would become for the video game industry, he quickly ordered then-Nintendo of America President Minoru Arakawa and Nintendo of America Executive Howard Lincoln to begin negotiations on CD-ROM Famicom slash SNES add-on with Sony's Dutch rival and electronics giant Philips. This time, Nintendo would set the terms and had only to give in to Philips' demand to use Nintendo's characters in a few games slated for their own CDI system. Being unaware of this turn of events, Sony completed their prototype for the June 1991 Consumer Electronics Show, where they, on June 1st, presented the Nintendo PlayStation to the world. Nintendo knew well what they were doing when they, the day after, set out to humiliate Sony on the world's greatest electronics expo by revealing their partnership with Philips. Sony was left empty-handed and prepared to pursue legal actions against Nintendo for breaking the contract signed back in 1988. Instead, Nintendo and Sony returned back to the negotiation table to find a settlement over the recent turn of events. In 1992, an agreement was reached, but Sony was not pleased, 
despite the massive burn that Philips and the Zelda and Mario CDI games had left on Nintendo, which had once again backed out from an SNES CD add-on. Interestingly enough, the retreat from a CD collaboration with Sony and Philips impacted the development of Square's Secret of Mana, which as a consequence had to be cut down from a CD to a cartridge-sized game. The aftermath of this failed collaboration is well known to everyone. Nintendo scrapped their plans for a CD-based system and instead focused all its efforts to develop the last Nintendo cartridge-based console until the Switch, the 64-bit Nintendo 64 system. On the other hand, Sony spearheaded by CEO Norio Oga and lead engineer Ken Kutaragi went on to refocus from the 200 to 300 Nintendo PlayStation Super Disk prototypes to, in 1993, put all their effort into the next generation 32-bit PlayStation, which would go on to crush the Nintendo 64 in sales numbers. Hey, plumber boy, mustache man, your worst nightmare has arrived. And convince many developers and publishers, including Square, to launch Final Fantasy VII on their system thanks to being CD-based and not cartridge-based. Nintendo had single-handedly, through what would turn out to be their biggest mistake, created a rival they wouldn't be able to realistically compete with sales-wise until the Wii, Nintendo's first fully CD-based system. So why do we talk about the Nintendo PlayStation and the breakup of the partnership between Nintendo and Sony? Simple, as I, Conrad, had recently the opportunity, thanks to Jan Olav Hegvik and the Norwegian Retro Spill Messen, you will too in Sanefjord, Norway on May 12th and 13th, to see and test the system and meet the owner of the only known Nintendo PlayStation Super Disc prototype, Mr. Terry Diebold. Together with me, I have two very special guests. Uh, one is Jan, who is the head of uh, the Retro Spielmessen, which is the biggest uh, retro convention in the Nordics, here in Europe. And uh, uh, the Nintendo PlayStation will actually be on the convention from, uh, from May 12th to 13th. Great. Yeah, and um, we will not uh, hide it uh, within glass. It will be open for every uh, visitor if they want to play uh, on it and take uh, pictures with it. Hold it like yeah. He is. So, and uh, it's exclusive for our convention in Scandinavia. Uh, we'll be the first ones to show it off. Right, and if you uh, reach out to Jan or Jorgen uh, and want to get in touch with me, uh, I'm bringing it to your part of the world. Please do. Yeah. I mean, uh, my uh, email address is tdieboild51 at verizon.net, and please try, you know, try to reach out to me. Show, share it with your friends. I mean, because I literally will go anywhere in the world with it. They, they already know that. I mean, if you're following me online, you'll, you'll see that I go to places for just for one day, and it takes me a day and a half, two days just to get to some of these places. It, it shows true passion. It shows true passion. But we have a piece of gaming history, uh, probably the biggest piece of gaming history, uh, it's a legend. Yeah. Right. It's not just an urban legend, but an actual gaming legend. Yeah. And uh, maybe you could tell a little bit about this system and which year it was manufactured. Uh, we believe it was around 1990, but you know, there's so many dates on the paperwork, it's, it's hard to nail it down. And uh, a lot of people back in the day, they aren't reaching out and actually giving me information because they signed NDAs. I mean, I do reach out. I've reached out to some people, uh, some of the companies, and uh, I'm not going to say which companies. And they pretty much told me, I can tell you a little, but I can't tell you a lot. So it's like, you know, okay, whatever, you know. Uh, but um, there's people out there who have actually seen this. I've let them play it, touch it, and everything else like Jan's doing. And they tell me that, oh, yeah, you know, we did this third party working on it. Uh, we have paperwork. We got this on it. Hey, here's my email address. Here's my home address. Send me the crap. I mean, if you, and I already got people that holding pictures of this thing and doing other things for me in the background. And they've asked me never to share their information whatsoever. And I won't. I don't kiss and tell when it comes to this thing. Trust me. So if you got stuff and you want to send it to me, please do. It'll travel with me because it's part of its history. I don't care if it's a piece of the plastic that's on the inside that I can recognize that it actually goes with this thing. It'll go with me in the prototype, just like any of the cartridges that people hand off to us with make and sign them, and they, they'll go anywhere all over the world. Yeah, because the system was manufactured, this specific piece, because they were made like 200 to 300 pieces. Not 200. 200, specifically. And uh, 
Uh, this one in uh, particular was made before the breakup between Nintendo and Sony at uh, the bad at the yeah, bad CES 1992 was it? Something like no, that. 91. 91 yeah, was it? Up uh, on stage, I mean, Nintendo basically, literally in, in front of thousands of people up on stage, said they were going to go with Philips instead of Sony. I mean, that's some serious cojones, but. Yeah. Uh, you know, they could have done that, you know, in the back room because I'm pretty sure there was a few black eyes at that point in the back room after that was all said and done. And it's a shame because they're both great companies. Yeah. You know, uh, good companies, well, even though they have bad things going on, they'll just move forward and become greater and bigger. And that's what both of them have done. Mm -hmm. So how does a mortal like you get hold of uh, such a gem like this? <laughs> I accidentally bought it at the uh, online auction um, at the company I worked at when they had it, uh, and without even knowing it was in the box. I was just bidding on cups, plates, and saucers from the boardrooms that were silver lined, and I, I packed that stuff up so I knew what I was bidding on. And when I won the bid, I went back and paid the auctioneers, and they showed me this big lot, and I'm like, dude, I didn't pack half this crap. But it took me two carloads to get it on, and like I said, anything that I had signed my name on, on, well, actually what was in the boxes, I set aside, and uh, other boxes that I did, and I just started opening up, and this is one of the things that was in it. You know, between the uh, console and the one and only controller and the uh, boot cart, you know, it was shocked. And I, we didn't really know what we had back then. Mm -hmm. We just saw it and we had something cool. And it also plays CDs. Uh, yeah, music CDs. Yeah. Music CDs. Yeah. 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 Okay, guys. Uh, once again, uh, the Nintendo PlayStation will be actually playable at uh, Retro Spillmessen in? In Sandefjord, Norway on the 12th and 13th of May. So there you have it, guys, and uh, we hope to see as many of you there as possible. Bring yep. your friends, friends. Yeah, definitely. Okay, thank you. <laughs>